Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go straight to the papers and see what major stories are uh, making the headlines this morning. We're going to be joined in a bit by uh, Demola Kingbola, the publisher of The Podium Media. But we're starting this morning with The Punch newspapers, which should be in your screen in just a few seconds. Um, and uh, we will be going through these papers. There you have it. It says, uh, Igbo Ho's extradition, Buratai pushes move, activists team um, meets Benez officials, fights process. How Igboho escaped, lured back to airport by travel agent, arrested on return. Federal government more active in arresting peaceful agitators than bandits, declares Afenifer. Pandef, Akinto, he alleged federal government working with terrorists and promoting ethnic cleansing. Also on the punch, OPEC agreement, Nigeria to raise oil production. And also prayers against insecurity <laughs> dominate Salah as Nigerians celebrate. Uh, we can also find here NCC facilitated e-transmission in 2019. Officials deserve prosecution. And power generation falls below 4,000 megawatts amid gas transmission problems. Still on the punch this morning. Why ex-permanent secretaries and others must return mismanaged 1 trillion naira. That's from the Senate. Port Harcourt Refinery will deliver products September 2022, says the NNPC. And the National Assembly says we're not in a hurry to transmit PIB to Buhari. Landlord killed as two-story building um, under construction collapses in Lagos. Ten killed in Kwara Sala Day crash of alleged speed violation. And um, well, what else can we find on the punch this morning? We don't have where to go. We won't relocate. Ogun flood uh, uh, plain residents uh, are speaking. All right, that's uh, what we have on The Punch this morning. Oh, really big stories there on The Punch. Let's look at The Guardian newspaper now. Uncertainty trails Igboho's arrest in Kotonou 20 days after DSS raid. That's on The Guardian. U.S. urged to impose visa ban on anti-poll electronic coalition senators. Don't criminalize opposing views. NLC cautions federal government. Cholera claims 30 lives in Chigawa. How federal government plans to boost exports with 50 billion naira ASP funding. Uh, those are the stories we're looking at on The Guardian. All right, moving on to the Daily Sun. Aftermath of arrest in Kotonou, confusion over Sunday Igboho's whereabouts. Lawyers move to forestall Kano treatment set to frustrate his extradition. Grant him and Kano amnesty as Boko Haram insurgents, Ladoja tells federal government. And also, federal government pursuing peace without justice on Sunday, Igbo and Kanu, and that's from Mohaneze. Anambra, we won't allow intruders hijack Abga, and that is from uh, Ezeonwuka and uh, Anibogu. Amnesty Office begins training of ex agitators on effective communications. Idel Kabir Olive Branch, Abdul Salami warns bandits, tells them to repent, embrace peace. Sultan and governors task leaders on selfless uh, service and uh, peace and unity. Uh, 2023, you can't win presidency, uh, tells uh, PDP, or you can't win presidency, tells PDP, says opposition party nursing force dream. And also Nigerians leverage 50 billion naira NAPC facility to boost non-oil exports. Let's look, um, finally, at uh, the Nigerian Tribune. The headline reads, Igbo who changed, chained like animal in Kotonou, lawyer alleges, may appear in court today. A Feni Ferry Middle Bed Forum, Ohanese, Ozekome Blast FG. Provide details on how Kanu was arrested, UK tells FG. Also on the Nigerian Tribune, above the headline, Anambra Paul, PDP accuses judge of hiding case file judgments to frustrate appeal, wants NJC chief judge to intervene. Electoral Act Amendment PDP reps caucus blames presiding officers for not inviting INEC. Don't criminalize social dialogue, NLC cautions federal government. Plight of Nigerians under Buhari government falls below expectation. That's according to the TUC. Still above the headline here on the Nigerian Tribune, after 42 days, bandits free 100 kidnapped victims in Zamfara. Two killed as Amoteku hoodlums battle in Ibadan. Ten die in auto crash in Kwara. Below the headlines, we can see um, statesmen here celebrating the Idel Kabri. And uh, PDP alleges Buhari's self-succession plot over presidents' remark on 2023.
I think oh. those are the stories we're looking at this morning. Uh, time to say good morning to our guest, Mr. Ademola Akimbola. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Please. Thanks for having me around here today. Fantastic. When we take a look at the headlines on all the national dailies, we see that the arrest of Sunday Buhu is, you know, the top story. Um, people are basically criticizing the presidency, saying that they basically um, attack peaceful agitators, they arrest them while bandits and the Boko Haram insurgents are freed. The lawyers are alleging that Buhu was chained like an animal. Um, court case to begin today. Um, you know, the federal, the UK is reacting, asking the federal government to provide details on how Kanu was arrested. Just so many criticism for the federal government um, regarding the arrest of Ibuho. What's your reaction to this? Uh, well, um, it's a bit cloudy as things are now because as we speak, the DSS hasn't issued any statement. The federal government hasn't said a word about this. And you begin to wonder who arrested Ibu and on whose instruction, okay, and for which offense, right? It's um, safe to assume that, okay, it was it was it was arrested on the basis of the fact that it was declared wanted, but it would have been nice for DSS to issue a statement to clarify all of this. Having said that, the question to ask the federal government is what exactly is the end game here? Kanu Ibu, what do you want to achieve by hunting these guys? Just as people have said, bandits, criminals, they are walking the street free, they are busy destroying lives, destroying property, and nothing has been done. So what exactly do we want to achieve? Okay, and just like the NSC has said, the federal government should stop criminalizing peaceful agitation. It is within the right of every citizen to agitate, to protest. Okay, and so far, we haven't heard that Ibo has caused any violent uh, protest or that, um, or is, or, or that he, has, he has mobilized uh, his, his supporters to be violent. So we need to ask the federal government, what exactly are you trying to achieve here? Okay, so that for me is something that we need to talk about. What, what, what you want to arrest him? Okay, try him. Okay, at the end of the day, if you arrest 100 Ibo's or 100 canons, that does not stop Nigeria from agitating for a better um, society, okay? And all of these are signs and symptoms of a society that is broken, that is fragmented. It are signs of the fact that Nigerians have lost hope in a nation called Nigeria. They've lost hope in the federal government. So there are so many things the federal government should be doing at this time that will make life better for Nigeria rather than haunting people who are going about um, protesting peacefully. So for me, it's an energy distraction that federal government can do without. Okay. It's a distraction. But right now, let us wait for an official statement from the DSS to tell us exactly, was this on your instruction? Okay, did you ask them to arrest him based on the fact it was the club wanted? And all these stories that we are hearing, for now, I believe they are still at the realm of conjecture. As long as there's no official statement, either by the Nigerian government or by the government in the Republic, it's difficult for anybody to respond in a way that will, that, that, that will bring clarity around this issue. All right. Um, still on, this, on the same thing, um, issue, uh, uh, mm -hmm. two angles I want you to quickly look at. Uh, the the yeah. Ratai um, angle, there's people who have mentioned mm -hmm. you know, his influence as, uh, of course, uh, um, ambassador in uh, Côte d'Ivoire. And um, also, uh, the, those who have also mentioned that, you know, Igbo's arrest might cause some friction between the North and, uh, and the Southwest. Um, are, there, are these things important to look at? Yes, of course. Um, Burata is just doing his job. The Nigerian security services will definitely push for him to be extradited. But also, there are international conventions, there are international laws that guide things like this. And apparently, the government in Benin Republic will not like to be seen in the light that the Kenyan government is being seen. So I, I, I see a lot of diplomatic moves being embarked upon both by the Nigerian government and by the government of, of, of the Republic. And again, just like you said, this is coming at a time that we almost lost one of our pilots, one of our fighter pilots, all right? And the question is, when did the insurgents or how did they become so powerful 
arms to the point that they can shoot our helicopters. Those are very serious issues. Okay, if it gets to a state where Air Force pilots are no longer safe when they go on their mission against terrorists, then we need to begin to ask ourselves, who is arming these terrorists to the point that they are beginning to stand toe-to-toe I mean, with the federal government, all right? So on the issue of Ibo, I expect the federal government to push. That is within their right. But again, we need clarity, okay? The, 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 for me, the entire process is... is, is Sure, the mystery, sure, so much secrecy that we, we need a statement either from the government of the Republic or from the federal government of Nigeria to tell us exactly what's going on. So that all these speculations, oh, he's been released, oh, he's been arrested, okay. all of this should come to an end. Yeah. Okay, so in, in the midst of all this insecurity, we still have the ruling all progressives Congress, you know, show, you know, lots of confidence that they will, you know, still hold power in 2023. We have a statement here, it's on the Daily Sun. Um, the headline reads, 2023, you can't win presidency. You can't win. Presidency tells PDP. And um, we hear we hear Gaba Shehu telling the opposition that they're nursing a full stream. But the PDP has responded saying their comments smacks of a plot um, for self-secession. Um, could we get your opinion regarding this? Gaba Shehu is saying that the president's um, President Muhammad Buhari enjoys unshakable support in his hometown, hometown and across the country. Um, do you think this is the reality, that the president enjoys unshakable support and that the masses will never abandon President Buhari's leadership and the APC come 2023? These are um, quotes from Kabashu. <coughs> I'm, I'm more concerned by the fact that the APC is insensitive. This is not the time to talk about we are going to be winning this election. That statement is ill-timed. It is grossly irresponsible on the part of the APC. Nigerians' concern today is security. Okay, security and a better quality of life. All right. Who wins the election is a matter for the electorate to decide when the time comes. In 2023, that is if the votes will count again. Okay, and that just shows you that for politicians, the only thing that matters to them is to win elections. Mm. Lives have been lost, they are not interested. It rained in Lagos two days ago, everywhere was flooded, they are not interested. Okay, the price of goods and services are, skyro uh, they are skyrocketing, they are not interested. Okay, and statements like this put the INEC under undue pressure. If a ruling government says you cannot win, how did you know? So for me, it, it's, it's, it's just sad by it that we, we need to waste our time on. It's an irresponsible thing to say. The timing is grossly, um, it, 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 it's wrong timing, and it, it's symptomatic of the insensitivity that Nigerian politicians have come to, to be known for over the years. Right. Okay, so, so it's, it's, a, it's not... It's, there's also something on the punch this morning that says uh, power generation falls below 4,000 megawatts. As uh, amid uh, gas transmission problems, uh, 2021, Mr. Akimbola, we still have these issues. Pretty much same with where we were in '97. Um, it doesn't seem like a lot has changed with regards, you know, generation of power and being able to properly utilize uh, the uh, gas resources that we have in Nigeria. You talk about 1997. Have you forgotten the song by Fela in the '70s? Light in come no day, fight uh, water in no day. Light. We are not making any progress because I can't even see any plan. In terms of power generation, I cannot see any plan that is being followed. Okay, if there's a plan and we and we can see that this plan is being well implemented, everybody will be hopeful. That, okay, in another two or three years, this is where we are going to. Most times, these promises are empty. When government officials say in, in two years' time we will increase to 6,000 watts, let us ask them, where is the plan? Where is the plan to achieve that? It's not enough to, 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 to announce goals or objectives. Where is the plan? Okay, and if our generation falls at this time, it shows that nobody is really in charge. Everybody is busy doing politics, everybody is busy chasing Kano and chasing the bull. Nobody is interested in how this will be achieved. 
and whoever is in charge of our generation, we need to ask them where is the blueprint? Where is the blueprint? Okay. Do, do you think it's a problem where that we? Blueprint? Do you think it's a problem that you know the electorate, the National Assembly, and the government itself doesn't ha have particular standards with which they they govern? They don't set particular goals, you know, for each office. You know, a, a minister doesn't have a particular goal or a target that he wants to reach in four years or eight years of being there. So, you know, you have a, a person being one position as a minister, and after eight years, yeah. nothing changes with regards electricity generation or anything. And they go, mm -hmm. and we, we call them ex-minister. Yeah, exactly. Every government that has come into office in Nigeria, they have, they have operated based on empty promises. Nothing like key performance indicators, nothing like targets, deliverables, okay? Even where they are announced, nobody is holding them accountable. And that comes down to the electorate, you and I. We are going to gloss over these issues again during 23. We are going to elect them. And the cycle continues, okay? We are not holding them accountable. So a minister promises this, it doesn't deliver, and life goes on, all right? Another minister comes, makes a promise, it doesn't deliver, life goes on. But the book stops on the table of Mr. President. Mm -hmm. If you have cabinet members who are not delivering, who are not performing up to the expectation, you ask them to leave. But that is not happening in Nigeria. Nigeria is the only place where we reward failure. Service, in, in, in public service, we reward failure, okay? Some service chiefs did not deliver. We asked them to go and we rewarded them with ambassadorial positions. So Nigeria rewards failure. Nigeria encourages failure. If a minister did not perform, another one gets there. It, 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 just, it just going to continue that tradition of non-performance. So we're not holding them accountable. The National Assembly is not, I mean, we've said that there several times. We do not even have a National Assembly. What we have is just a garden of overfed lawmakers who are more interested in what gets to them. We don't have a National Assembly. They have committees that should provide oversight functions. What are they doing? Nothing. They are more interested in collecting contracts from the parasitas under their ministries. Nothing has been done. You've been, so I'm, sure, I'm sure you've been president. watching the um, um, uh, Dr. Fauci um, uh, grilling by the, um, yeah. the U.S. Senate. It, uh, yeah. That's, that's probably um, very likely what you're describing here that you would expect from our National yes. Assembly. It, it, it will never happen in Nigeria. And if it happens, it will just be a charade. It will just, it, it will just be um, for the cameras. Okay? Remember NDDC? Was it early this year or last year? So much noise about National Assembly Pro. What has happened? Nothing. They go there, they make so much noise. Behind the scene, they go to negotiate, they settle the lawmakers, and life goes on. Okay, so it's, we, we, the power belongs to the people. The day we realize that we, the electorate, we hold the power, that is when Nigeria will be liberated. As soon as we, I mean, as long as we allow lawmakers, as long as we allow those guys that do not care about our interests, as long as we allow them to decide the direction that this, this country will go will not make any progress. Power belongs to the people. Everywhere, all over the world, power belongs to the people. The ballot box is the, the most powerful weapon of effecting change. When are we going to start using this power in the right way? Okay. okay. When are we going to have youth who would reject gift so that they could vote according to their conscience? So if we blame the leaders, if we blame them for not performing, let us blame followers for not holding leaders accountable. 50-50, we are all in this together. We've all been responsible for where Nigeria is today. If you blame the leaders, blame yourself as a follower. What have you done? What have I done? Nothing. Yeah. Basically nothing. So, Mr. Akimola, on the, on the Daily, um, on yes. The Guardian, there's a story that reads, U.S. urged to impose visa ban on anti-poll electronic coalition senators. Um, that story is repeated also on, uh, I think, the Nigerian Tribune. So basically, there's a group that's saying that yeah, these about 50, 52 senators that voted no to electronic transmission of results, that you know, the US should deny them visas. Do you think this is one way that you know, we can begin to you know, get um, accountability from our lawmakers, or do you think there's other ways we can do this? 
So as, as far as I'm concerned, that, that call is not is not reasonable because these lawmakers they reserve the right to vote for against a particular bill. What is more important is you know for INEC, okay, to prove to the whole world that it is truly independent. With what has happened in the National Assembly concerning the Electoral Act, I think we should just rename INEC and remove that independence from its name because it is not independent any longer. All right. So even if the lawmakers they reserve the right to vote for or against any bill, but the direction of the debate is what bothers me. The kind of debate that those guys go through, it, it is funny. It, it is funny. In 21st century in Nigeria, we are debating whether we should to have electronic transfer of results or not, it, 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 it's um, befuddling, really. So, so Mr. Okay. Ikebola, do you think that yes. INEC is helpless in the face of all these laws and votes on whether it should transmit results electronically and whether it's truly independent? Can INEC go to court? That's I, something that we've been talking about in recent time. INEC is not powerless. The fortunate thing is that does INEC even have the power that it holds? By the status that set up INEC, does INEC realize the influence and the extent of its own power? That is the question. I'm not sure it does. INEC, of course, can go to court. It can go to court. Because you also have to look at the reality on ground. I like electronic transmission of results. Is this workable in Nigeria? Okay? Is this something that the structure, the telecommunication structure we have in Nigeria today, can it really sustain it? Okay, so as desirable as it is, is it practicable? You go to you go to some places in Nigeria, there is no network. All right, and electronic transmission should not be something that we will spend so much time and effort discussing. If the average INEC official is honest and is patriotic, okay, these are things that we shouldn't even be discussing at all. So as desirable as it is, we need to ask ourselves: Is it practicable? In your village, is there network 24 hours of the day? When it rains, what happens? So those are this before now, we've had INEC transmitting results manually. In some cases, this is done seamlessly. So which means that trans, the mode of transmission is not the problem. The problem here is the attitude and the dependability of the official involved. Even with electronic transmission, those who will rig will rig. That is that 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 is the statute of Nigeria. Rigging has moved from even collation, but even when you announce results, a candidate can go to court and a court can offset everything. So the entire electoral process needs to be revealed. The attitude of those who are managing the process needs needs to be revealed. Everybody, everybody, like I said earlier on, we need more in Interested, let's move this country forward. Whatever bit that, that, that has been assigned to you, do it well. Someone says discipline is what to do when no one is watching you. All right. So when are we going to have officials with conscience good enough to do the right thing? Mm. Whether, whether manual or electronic transmission of results. That for right. me is it, 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 the more important issue here. Yeah. Right, finally, I think you, you can just use uh, about 30 seconds to respond to Abdul Salami, who is warning bandits. Yeah. And uh, telling them to repent and embrace peace. Let's ask Absalom to warn the federal government to allow justice to reign. There can't be peace if there's no justice. Okay? He should be talking to the president to allow justice to reign in the country. He should be asking the government to allow equitable justice, fairness. All right? Let every region in the country feel that they have this sense of belonging. If you have a federation, the federation unit must be well briefed of what's going on and they must be carried along and everybody must feel contented. As long as people are not happy, manifestly policies are skewed towards a particular section of the country, you can't have peace. It, it, you can't. If you are, like I said at the beginning, if you arrest hundreds of Sunday bulls and hundreds of canons, the agitations will continue. It will continue. And when you try to criminalize peaceful protest, then you are actually challenging people, you are encouraging them to become violent. I will not preach violence, I do not support violence, but there are better ways of managing these issues than the way the federal government is going about it. All right. Why don't you invite Kanu and the Bo and their team? Invite them to a live 
debate or a live negotiation, and let's all agree on what are the demands. Look at NSAS, long list of demands. How many have we met? All right. So, so Ademola Kimbola, thank yeah. you so much for your time this uh, Wednesday morning. Thank you. Thank Truly you. appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. Uh, happy so Salah much. once again, uh, and beautiful day. Uh, well, I need that word to bring the meat before I say Happy Salah to her. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. All yeah. right. Bye bye. Okay, so we'll take a break here to go back in time. And I'm going back to the year 2012. And uh, this um, almost, almost relates to the story we talked about today regarding Jeff Bezos going out of space. Yes, it is. We'll be back after the short break. <laughs>